this is me, if anyone forgot. Uh, and it's now time for the closing ceremonies. So uh, the idea here, as last year, is to capture some uh, of what has inspired us about FanFest and uh, what our takeaway will have. Uh, We'll have Antti and we have Andrew from the Valkyrie team, we have Svenny, we have uh, a new entrant to the CCP come on stage. But before we do all that, uh, I have a very special guest to introduce. So with us today, we have Mr. Olaver Ragnar Grimson, who is the president of Iceland. He's been the president of Iceland for the past 20 years. So he's been our president throughout all of CCP's existence. Uh, and he has actually been a dear friend to the company throughout many of our ups and downs and has often helped us along the way. Uh, and he was very happy to come here and speak to us. And I know he is going to inspire us uh, with some of his wisdom uh, and how some of his reflections on what has, he has been watching from the sidelines. So please join me in welcoming Mr. Olaver Ragnar Grimson. Thank you very much. Finally, I am invited to join this great fun fest. <laughs> I have been complaining to the company for, I think, a few years that they had never invited me. And I was not quite sure whether it was good for my PR to actually attend on my own. <laughs> <laughs> but you are obviously having a great time. <laughs> but let me... Before I reflect on the CCP, thank all of you who have traveled across the globe and from afar for joining us here in Iceland, because I'm not sure whether you realize, maybe you are so absorbed in the fan fest and your own world, that you don't realize what an extraordinary dynamic addition your gathering is uh, to our community here in Iceland. As an indication of what I mean, we are, to some extent, very preoccupied about ourselves. The American ambassador is here with us uh, tonight. I think it is also his first time. And, uh, <laughs> and as all of you know, the Icelanders discovered America 1,000 years ago. And if the uh, ambassador forgives the remark, uh, as somebody said, we're also, also wise enough to leave. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but the most interesting aspect of the story is that although we discovered this new continent and wrote about it in the sagas in the Icelandic language, which at that time only about 40,000, 50,000 people understood, we didn't tell anybody about it. So when Christopher Columbus arrived on the scene, that was really a big world event. Of course, he had a better PR firm in the Catholic Church on his uh, side. <laughs> and I'm very proud that uh, a few years ago, I was able to uh, get His Holiness the Pope to accept a statue of the first Icelandic woman that settled in the American continent 1,000 years ago. But it's an indication of how absorbed we are with ourselves, that traditionally throughout Icelandic history, we think if we have told the story to ourselves, that's enough. That's enough. That has enabled us to write poems and books throughout the centuries, even if, if we were poor. And when modern music started and pop music uh, with Björk and the Sugar Coops and others, uh, their main preoccupation was not to be world famous. Their main preoccupation was actually to make it in Iceland. So your gathering now annually here is an extraordinary transformation that through CCP and what's happening in the EVE universe, we are now 
concentrating on creating stories for others and inviting you and people from all over the world to come together in a new way, which I thought was actually unthinkable when CCP started in its early stages. And one of the great privileges of my presidency and which has given me hopes and inspiration and new vision is to follow this company from the very beginning through, as was said, the ups and downs. Because it was a paradoxical impossibility that we could create here in this country, despite this new technology, a new universe of storytelling and events and interactions where people all over the world came together. But that is what has happened. And when I, a few years ago, was in Shanghai and visited the CCP headquarters in Shanghai and saw people from the United States, from Britain, from China, from Iceland, joining there together and now creating new games, it was yet another manifestation that for me, the CCP story is the great reminder of how the world has fundamentally changed. That is really the truth and the essence, despite the fun and the games and everything else that it provides you. It is the ultimate truth that whereas we, for over a thousand years, created stories for ourselves, we now, in the global community, create stories for everybody. And have fun at the same time. And hopefully also <clears throat> make the world better at the same time. Because by joining each other through this effort, you also create a global community which <clears throat> has never before existed. And for our small nation, who believed for centuries, yes, through poetry and stories, we could justify our existence, it is also the evidence that through this new technology, we can create global companies that are creative and dynamic. I am often asked the question, what is the reason for Iceland, such a small community, almost paradoxically, ridiculously small community, being able to make it mark not only every year in new books, new novels, new poetry, new music, new films, new theaters, new innovations, new companies, new entrepreneurship, and through CCP and others, new phenomenon uh, on, the, uh, on the global connection universe. And the explanation is an extraordinary element of creativity which somehow is being fostered in this small nation by everybody interacting with each other in a way which we didn't do before. And your presence here every year has a great impact of giving us a new confidence in the continuation of this creativity. So I hope during your stay you are not only having great fun, extraordinary fun, unusual fun, sometimes a fun of the kind that uh, it would be a killer for the president to, to actually attend. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that, that I hope you feel proud in being able to contribute through CCP and the games and EVE and the FanFest to this process, which is centered in Iceland, yes, that's true, but also in Shanghai and other countries, but also every day all over the world, through you and your partners everywhere. And by coming here every year, through your personal presence, you are giving us a new strength and confidence to continue on this path. On behalf of the people of Iceland, and especially the young generation which is seeking the belief in themselves, I want to thank you for, for this contribution. It's true, I, I have followed CCP from uh, the very early stages. I would never forget that uh, when the banks collapsed, when the entire financial system of the country uh, became bust, so to speak, 
And we were, for a while, exhibit number one of a failed financial state. I decided, almost like a father confessor, to make a trip around the country and help the nation in its shock and sorrow. And, uh, and that was perhaps the role of the presidents, to be a, almost like a Catholic priest, uh, a kind of servant in these deep times, which were actually quite shocking demonstrations uh, every night outside the parliament and the prime minister's office. So, I decided, let me go to workplaces and uh, institutions, and I decided to start on the first day in a fishing plant close to the Old Harbor, uh, very close to the CCP headquarters, and to go at the lunchtime to CCP. And remember, in those days, October, uh, November 2008, it was a profound shock, not just here, but everywhere else. So as I came into the dining hall of CCP, there was a great spirit. There was a joy in the air. They almost shouted hurrah because of the uh, collapse of the banking system. <laughs> and I thought, am I in the wrong place? <laughs> <laughs> but it was to me one of these unforgettable moments as we journeyed through this crisis, because they told me the story that the potential of CCP to grow globally had been hindered by the banks taking up the people with skills and knowledge and qualification to actually help CCP to, to move forward. And therefore now, when the banks were no longer in the same size and on the scene, CCP could then welcome all these people and predicted that they would topple the players globally within a year and a half. So the collapse of the banks was actually the greatest news that CCP had had since its foundation. <laughs> Almost as crazy as the fan fest is in its character. But they turned out to be right. They turned out to be right. And I've told this story all over the world when people are discussing the Western and the American financial crisis, when people are comparing the belief in the financial market versus the creativity of others who work in different sectors. And the moral of the story is that the creativity of CCP and others and all of you is a better way to go forward in the 21st century than the old belief in the preeminence of the financial market. And so we are here today, and all of you, and can rejoice in the fact that those predictions actually have come not just true, but splendidly true, through the help of all of you. So let me thank you again for being with us. Let me thank CCP for having finally invited me <laughs> to come. They actually invited me when they, they thought I was stepping down. <laughs> I hope it doesn't cause you a problem that I decided to run again. <laughs> but in the end, in the partnership with all of you, we will take this forward in a fantastic way. So let's continue in the way that CCP has inspired us in Iceland and all of you since its foundations. Thank you very much. Thank you, Oliver. <laughs> um, as Oliver said, he is actually running for president again, uh, which he announced in the week. Uh, I was kind of hoping he would have done it here, but uh, <laughs> uh, I, 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 I guess uh, everything has its place and has its time. So here we are, yet again, uh, together for Hotel Fun Fest. Uh, and as I back 
begin uh, this year, uh, here are some of the key themes that really connect with me about what this is all about. So it's our annual celebration of what we have achieved together. It's connecting together on this passion that we all share and continuing our collaboration on this journey. When Ola was talking about when he came to visit CCP back in 2008 during the financial collapse, uh, I remember that very fondly, and he is very right. It didn't really affect us other than in a positive way because we knew we had you guys and uh, we don't really need banks and bubbles and all that to maintain our relationship with you. There's some of it is involved with actually making it run as a business, but we figured that out. It took a while when kind of your whole banking system goes away and you're running a global company. But, uh, <laughs> but we found that out to do. So uh, I'm gonna kind of uh, uh, begin a little journey of FanFest this year. So it kind of began on Wednesday morning uh, where a lot of people uh, from the Reykjavik office and also from around the world uh, greeted the, the first players arriving very early and took them on the dev push from the airport. Uh, it's a very fun thing we've had it in recent years. Uh, then we have had some amazing talks. Here is CCP Quant, quantifying the EVE economy, which was quite amazing. Sucked up a lot of graphical resources to make all these charts work. Um, and he kind of worked it out for us, which I didn't know before, that uh, the Keepstar, the Palatine Keepstar, is one fifteenth of the entirety of the current EVE economy. And uh, then I actually saw on Reddit that someone had figured out that based on the information released by Quant, the current value of the EVE economy is $55 million. And then I was calculating. So one fifteenth of $55 million. Is that $3.5 million? <laughs> For like one object? <laughs> Oof, I think we might have overdid it. <laughs> I'll guess we'll see in the coming months. Uh, at least they will, if one will have been built by next FanFest, we, we must do something special. Then we saw into CCP Coast's brain uh, and something about his story, which involved, I don't know, espionage, the CIA, international financial forensics, a weird brain, is he an actual person or a ghost? <laughs> Sounds like a guy we should put on the MPE. <laughs> uh, and we have had some amazing player talks. Here we have uh, a player that lives. <laughs> he lives in a vermal, which is very inspirational to me that people actually do that. When we made the wormhole design, nobody ever, ever thought as that as a credible thing to do. Uh, he's claiming to be the king of wormholes, and he's wearing that costume. Is this true? Yes. Yeah. Uh, what's the relationship with Bob, the god of wormholes? Like. Bob is the god of wormholes, right? Yes. yes. And the king and the god, they're friends. No, they're not friends. <laughs> I, I need to learn a lot more about this. Uh, I think we should get Andrew to write a story about this. Uh, anyway, uh, we have had some amazing talks from uh, people in the ecosystem, like Andrew Groen, who told us about the amazing true stories. And just like Oliver was saying, making stories, it's a thing in Iceland. We've been doing it a lot. And now we have you guys making stories, and we've kind of created this infinite storytelling engine, which is the operating system of Eve Online. And now it's being published at Books. This I'm extremely proud of that we're able to put this together. I, of course, packed the Kickstarter. Uh, here we have some artists uh, which are talking about the Eve visual design and how it impacts the emotion of the game. And I know the art team is actually looking quite a bit with Trikwe on how to, or Ghost, to kind of impact the new player experience with the emotion of the graphics. Here we see live drawing organized by Herr Director Ben Bone, who's the leader of the art team, and CCP Pointy Bits doing something new. Looks like a structure. Um, 
And of course, we have had some amazing hands-on. We have had Project NOAA and Project Arena in the new project group. Were we liking that? Yeah. And my daughter, Eva, has been pestering me uh, ever since last week when do I get to play the VR stuff? It's like, VR stuff? We have an Oculus Rift here. No, the VR stuff, the proper one, <laughs> which to her is the, is the full body experience. She came here and spent hours uh, in the queue and playing against her cousin. Uh, had a lot of fun with that. Uh, and then, of course, we've had a lot of connection. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I was able to connect with my wannabe squad. I'm not at their level, but I dream of being at their level. And uh, at least when I squad up with them, it helps the kill-death ratio a lot. Um, and uh, I know they were uh, in opposing teams at the, at the tournament, and Antti will talk about, more about that later. Then we had another tournament, a bit of a surprise tournament at FanFest. So there was a tournament in Project Discovery. So the amazing people behind Project Discovery have created a tournament edition. Uh, and I was present for the first ever science esports bake-off <laughs> tournament. <laughs> and this here is the winner. He got a very fancy science coat. And he's putting his PL flag here. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and then, of course, we had the Amar Championship. It looked amazing. Uh, rising from the ceiling and like this level of organization, it's, it's amazing to see. We had House Tars Merkin faced off with House Corosor in a best of five months. And it came down to the wire, exactly who had won. I was actually watching the guys on the stream just before the keynote on how much stress and like tension has gone into determining the fate of the Amar Empire. I know the Empress is very proud that she won. Uh, she is actually happier than she looks here. Uh, uh, this is as of before. Uh, I would thoroughly encourage somebody in the Lord team to make her a little more happier now that she is <laughs> now that she has become the Empress. Uh, and here, everyone is the eight finalists. Uh, you even seen Kellon Darklet sporting a custom-made Tasmer concert or hoodie. This is really cool. I love it. Uh, and here they are on stage, biting down on their super valuable silver and gold medals, uh, the only ones existing in the universe. These look like the people that decide the fate of empires. <laughs> And cosplay, woo! Yeah. Even more cosplay than last year. Oh, I love it. Uh, and there was a competition. Some people won. Uh, and I'm gonna go through it. In third, we have Grumpy Rofo, who is here as a concert guard. He won a piece of framed concert art and a fistful of plaques. I am very happy about the monocle. It's, uh, it's a thing. Uh, and in second place, we have our very own space pop. Uh, disguised as a pharaoh. So inside this pharaoh is a pope. <laughs> uh, and the pharaoh actually holds a near and dear place in my heart. Because when we originally started to make him online, uh, we had a plan of releasing it in 2001 which didn't happen. Then we had a plan to release it in 2002, which didn't happen either. And then we said, OK, we must start doing something. So we started this thing with the peak of the week to kind of use the lore to uh, keep the players we had way before the release of the game kind of engaged with the game. And the first ever peak of the week was about the Pharaoh. And those of you who know might recognize that this is a male Pharaoh. <laughs> Uh, the female pharaohs are larger, and they have a poisonous stinker, uh, which is very toxic to humans. So they're generally frowned upon as uh, sucking the, the dirt out of Mimantar ships. Anyway, it's good to see the pharaoh here, 
like in force. And of course, uh, he won an excellent Razor Prize packet and a signed copy of The Art of New Eden. Let's give the Space Pope a <laughs> applause. And in first place, we have Sakta Basilica, who is here dressed inspired by dust, as an excellent NOAA knife. And she won an NVIDIA 980 Ti graphics chart. <laughs> and I see her there waving the knife. Congratulations. <laughs> Uh, and on Thursday, we had an amazing charity dinner. This has become one of my favorite moments at FanFest. It's really thrilling conversations. Uh, we had a lot of players attend. We kind of, uh, uh, kind of did a mix of what we did last year and the years before. I think the new format is actually quite good. We had actually a very special moment where uh, Max Singularity, the Space Pope, actually blessed the board of CCP. So we have here uh, representatives of the boards of CCP and, uh, and our shareholders. So it's good that they're now all much more holier than they used to be. Uh, anyone here went to the after party? No? No, OK. <laughs> That's good that nobody is speaking about that. Uh, <laughs> there were people at the after party. But the coat is upheld. Uh, and of course, uh, the, the charity dinner is a great kind of very good atmosphere to talk about the game. And we have a lot of new CCPers with us now. And here we have CCP Orca, who's our global marketing director, learning a lot about the game through kind of direct conversation after charity dinner. And the charity dinner, of course, is about charity. And the charity dinner and the silent auction have raised $16,130. Thank you for that. Uh, and as I talked about that at the charity dinner, uh, we have now picked a local charity, which is the Children's Hospital of Iceland, Partners Pitali Hringsin. So we have collected last year and this year uh, something which is amounting up to 3 million ISK, the Icelandic one, not the A1. Uh, and just like the president was saying in his opening remarks, uh, it's important for us that when you guys come here to Iceland, you don't only leave a mark on us through our kind of interaction and inspiration you give us, but we also build something permanent here in Iceland and putting something there next year when we have tallied up a good amount, which is going to be the donation of this community to the Children's Hospital of Iceland, uh, is something I really look forward to doing. Then we had uh, Sisters of Eve. They went to Delta Tungu Kver and Hraunfossar. Uh, I, unpronounceable Icelandic names, uh, and uh, a super cool ice cave, which I have never actually been to. Uh, so the Sisters of Eve has seen more of Iceland than I have. Looks super cool. Uh, and of course, Pub Crawl, uh, which I heard was amazing. Uh, and I heard the truth was mostly upheld. Uh, Eve politics uh, were not that much brought into pub crawl. And we have some amazing stories. Uh, <laughs> okay, you know about that. Uh, this is Dan, he's from England. Uh, he's with CCB Guard at the pub crawl. Uh, Dan was watching Eve FanFest on the live stream on Thursday and thought it was so cool, he bought a ticket and was here this morning. <laughs> If there was ever an endorsement for the stream, I think this is it. <laughs> uh, and then I talked about in the opening about this concept of Eve is real. Uh, and we put up this wall and a tweet thing. And I mean, it's amazing to look at this wall. We actually had a KPI I didn't tell you about in the opening remarks because it would have ruined it. And it's time to dick pic. It took four hours, uh, which is like, I, I'm happy for the restraint, because I've demonstrated some Eve features have had shorter <laughs> time, to, time to penis. <laughs> um, 
And uh, in another FanFest first, uh, we have a new baby born during FanFest. This is baby Chris. Uh, he was born during FanFest. He was technically born on the stream. He was not here. <laughs> but uh, FanFest will be again next year. If anyone is planning any baby making, I am sure uh, the team at the Children's Hospital of Iceland, the actual doctors, uh, can help with that. Uh, and then a shout out to our sponsors, uh, especially the Apple Consortium, who seems to be bringing all this to the EVE universe. Uh, and our friends at Oculus, uh, we have tortured tests, tested a lot of their equipment this FanFest. This has been the largest showing of touch controllers ever. And boy, have you guys been able to like rack that stuff well. <laughs> Uh, they have been uh, taking a lot of notes, and I think we have helped them quite a bit by, by kind of torturing their machinery for three days straight. Uh, but now uh, I want to bring on stage uh, a new person to the leadership at CCP. Her name is Maria Science, and she is our chief customer officer. Thank you. Hello. This is a picture of my brain. <laughs> it isn't, but, but this is a picture of my cat. And I'm just going to leave him up there so you can bask in his awesomeness while I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I'm a Spaniard. Um, I have been playing games since I was, uh, God, since I was a teenager. But my first love was really science fiction. Um, and I devoured all the Asimovs, all the Philip K. Diggs as a, as a teenager. And I've been reading science fiction you know, up until today. And probably, uh, probably today, my, I, my biggest interests are um, brain science and philosophy. Uh, but even to this day, my favorite novel is uh, Solaris. Oh, I'm getting a little bit nervous. You're a big audience. <laughs> Uh, um, by Stanislav Lev. Now, it's a little novel, um, but it really touches on some of the topics that I really care about, um, th things that interest me, um, things you know, to do with reality, with perception, with communication, things that are about the nature of the human experience. And that is something that I have found an ability to explore. Um, in uh, my new job at CCP. Um, I've been working in games for 15 years, and, and a while ago, I realized that I want to work in big, beautiful games at the deep end of gaming until I'm a little old lady. Um, so me coming to CCP was just, just really meant to be. Because CCP is an amazing company, and I've been an admirer uh, for very many years. I remember hearing about how CCP really engages communities and hearing about things like FanFest um, and the CSM and really trying to convince my previous employer to do things like that. Um, it really is a very unique place um, and, uh, and has a great relationship with, with players. And we're going through a very interesting point, uh, interesting time at CCP. Um, really, there's still so many places that we can take EVE and we're exploring boldly the opportunities that VR affords us. But we're only just starting to imagine what happens when these two worlds collide. We can imagine them somewhere over there, but we don't even know what that looks like. Um, so these are very, very exciting times. Um, and I'm just being very happy in the last five months that I've been with CCP. So what do I do? What's my role here? Um, so, as a chief customer officer, uh, my team, I lead the team whose role it is to expand and deepen our relationships with our players. And that involves many, many things. So, you know, from asking and trying to figure out what is it that players really love about playing our games? What do they like? What do they dislike? Um, to then creating 
awesome trailers, assets, and campaigns that really bring that to life. You know, the trailer that you saw, was it yesterday? Was it two days ago? Um, the, fe the, the, the feature tour of Citadel, which brings me goosebumps every time I see that thing. Um, then we engage with players online, um, on forums, on social media, at events, and our role is to bring more players into the game, make sure that as they come they have a great experience, but also be there when things break uh, and uh, when things are not as awesome as they should be. As, um, you know, the role of my team is, you know, we really touch every process um, uh, at CCP and in our games. And our role is very much, at every step of the way, try to bring the player experience and ask what happens when you put the player at the center of this. So, it's my first fan fest. <laughs> and, and I thought I would share my impressions as a noob. So first of all, uh, the one thing that I really surprised me, even just coming through the process of getting ready, all the work that goes into getting ready for FanFest, is to see the team come together. Everyone at CCP works over their job uh, to do whatever it needs to bring this experience to all of you guys. From putting together presentations, to sorting out the merchandise for the store, handling the front desk, welcoming players, doing demo hours upon hours and days upon days. It really fills everyone with energy and passion for the year. And I couldn't be more proud to be part of such a passionate and hardworking team that really loves what they do. So I just want to ask you guys for an applause to the CCPers. <laughs> but FanFest is... Um, is really about the players. Um, and this year, we really wanted to bring the experience of FanFest to uh, the players at home. Um, our live stream was uh, is going from strength to strength and doing better every year. And I think at some point this time, we were at peak over uh, 10,000 viewers. Uh, we tried something new with uh, react.evenline.com and managed to last for about two minutes uh, <laughs> before it broke. Uh, so we're going to try harder next year. We're going to test it more under you know, all sorts of uh, stress tests and make sure that it uh, survives uh, next year. Um, and it was great to see the reaction online of many players, both here and, uh, and at home, and particularly on Twitter around some of the things about what is EVE. This is one of the topics that me and my team are really working on right now, is to really understand what people love about EVE. So we were paying particular attention to this one. And the topic that comes across is about friendships. Uh, it's about spaceships as well, but friendships and it's about people. And of course, meeting all the people at FanFest, uh, was really a highlight, <laughs> uh, uh, a highlight of the experience. Um, I've been so inspired by, m by many of you about your passion, your intelligence, your creativity, your generosity. You create a world that is real and that transcends what's happening on the pixels on the screen. And the authenticity that you bring to EVE Online is absolutely unique. I think the highlight of my time uh, here was actually sitting in one of those seats, um, listening to Andrew Grohn's uh, Empires of Eve presentation. And I was completely transported. I don't know if you guys listen to like Dan Carlin podcasts and this, yes, it, it, was, it was this history being brought to you and it was absolutely mesmerizing, but then I looked and I saw that everybody there was exactly like me, completely transported by those stories. And then it just occurred to me, these people here, you've created those stories, and they are real, and they will remain. And to me, that was a really, really powerful emotional moment. So anyway, I hope to be part of moments like that for many years to come, and I hope to meet many of you uh, this evening uh, and in the future. And thank you so much for letting me be part of your FanFest. So before I go, I'm going to introduce another FanFest noob, Andrew Willems. Thank you. Thank you so much.
Good afternoon, FanFest. <laughs> so I'm going to kick off with an apology. So last night at the pub, I came up with a really great idea. So we had an anthem, a very famous theme tune that we used to sing when it was time to move on between pubs, Indiana Jones. Uh, and I said, this is going to be great. I'm going to come on stage. I'm going to walk out. I'm going to start humming it. You're all going to join in. And then I woke up at like 3 o'clock in the morning and I realized, <laughs> what if no one joins in? You're going to look a fool. And B, you've already done the trench run of carrier assault. How long before George Lucas gets on the phone and says, <laughs> here's, here's some words. <laughs> Sue you. <laughs> so <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Uh, so, as Maria was saying, this is also my first fan fest, and woo! <laughs> and it has been genuinely an honour and a privilege uh, to be accepted into such a passionate and enthusiastic gaming community. It's been a privilege, it really has, and I've been given presents, I've been given advice, I've been given lots of chat. People have stopped me and told me all about, you know, how they see the future of Valkyrie and what we should and shouldn't do. It's been absolutely fantastic, so thank you to everyone for sharing, stopping me in the corridor and saying, have you got five minutes? I've always got five minutes. And this is, this is some of the, just very brief, this is some of the amazing people I've met, sharing their stories. This was the queue outside of the Valkyrie uh, hands-on that we had. We also did, I did a presentation on Carrier Assault, obviously that's the new game mode. Uh, and so I did the presentation, had lots of cool feedback from that. Then we went to do a round table session where we just discussed, you know, the roadmap for, uh, for Valkyrie. And we chatted a little bit about the game modes, the mechanics, the rules and the features. You know, the overwhelming response was, you love Carrier Assault, so this is cool. And then you gave me lots of advice and lots of tips on the things that you want to see first. Um, and your voice, your voice is being heard, you know, you, are, you genuinely are helping us shape the future of Eve Valkyrie, and it's, it's an honor to have you on board. I also went to the pub numerous times, and this was cool. I went to a, a player gathering, and this was a really good time to meet the players in person and actually put a face to the gamer tags. Uh, and for once, you weren't actually locking on to me with, uh, with your missiles. <laughs> the only shots I received were in a glass. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> and we had the Valkyrie hands-on, uh, lots of people came to visit that, it was fantastic to see lots of new pilots and some veteran pilots, lots of familiar faces, uh, and someone even came through 17 times, so that was you, I salute you, awesome. <laughs> and we had like a customer service survey kind of satisfaction thing that we asked you to fill in as part of that. Uh, for some reason, Google seems to think that red or orange is a positive color. I don't know, maybe we should have a chat about that, but, but red or orange on this chart is actually a good thing. So, so what we're looking at here is 96% good and 72% saying excellent. So basically, this is what we love to see. Some great, uh, great comments there. Awesome, those who cannot adapt become victims of evolution. That's a bit dark, but I kind of like where it's going, you know. <laughs> Evolve or die. <laughs> uh, and we also had a one, which was how likely you are to recommend Valkyrie to a friend. Almost everyone said they would kind of in some way recommend, uh, highly likely or very likely to recommend the, friend, uh, the game to a friend. And this is really cool because as with EVE Online, word of mouth from Valkyrie players is really important. Uh, we basically want to make the game, we want to make the game for you that, that you're going to love and that you're going to bring your friends to so that we can grow the fledgling community which we've started. Uh, and we had the tournament draw this morning. So this, these are people, <laughs> These are very hungover people. <laughs> this was, I honestly don't, we were doing, you know, we did names out the hat. So there's CCP uh, Red Cape and CCP Bozen. Woo! Uh, <laughs> woo, give me a shout out. <laughs> doing the draw. So we had a hat that uh, one of our players, one of our pilots had donated to us. So this wonderful fedora hat that we were pulling the names out of. And there's some hungover faces out here. And it was kind of like, right. Name, read the name out, look about, no, they're dead. <laughs> no, pulling out, no, no, they're, they're still in the bar. Uh, but we had the tournament. Uh, and the tournament just happened today. It happened at four o'clock today. Uh, and so, you know, that basically we've got hot off the press. These are our tournament winners. So. <laughs> 
This is Frag Solo, Ladle, Turn, got to be careful how I pronounce this one, Canceller, <laughs> and Wan5, our very own Geordie Pilot, Wan5. So well done to the team, it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, it was a really heated kind of clash of the titans as well, it was a really good streamed event. So you're going to Vegas, baby! Yeah. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> Pack your bags! Good on! <laughs> Uh, and that's almost, uh, it's pretty much me done for this really short kind of section. Uh, and again, I just want to say thanks to all of the fans. It genuinely has touched my heart. And I hope I get to come back again next year and do some more cool stuff. Uh, boom, bitch. <laughs> boom, bitch. <laughs> yeah. We need another boom, bitch. That's what's happening. That's when the carrier goes down. Now, that's a punctuation point. Uh, I'd also like to fa thank the, uh, the Newcastle dev team that have worked really hard here at FanFest and say a big thank you to all of the, the dev team back at Newcastle at home who are probably sat watching us now. You guys are awesome. Keep working. So, <laughs> and I'll hand you back <laughs> to Lord of CCP, Hilmar. Thank you very much. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you, Andy. Uh, so we had uh, a lot of playtests and a lot of tournaments, uh, as we know, covered that greatly, from a science tournament to a Valkyrie tournament and to some project Noah hands-on. Uh, here's what it looked like. Uh, we, we have even like cloned from prehistoric DNA, I guess, a dinosaur to get their feedback. Um, not sure what it's about, but it looks awesome. Uh, uh, and here's some of the, the feedback. So how would you rate your overall experience in Project NOAA? And I would say a majority of you have rated it good to excellent. And we have, we have some comments like awesome at this date, pink jumpsuits. Uh, and environments need to feel more like if which uh, I think is a really good feedback point for the team to, to kind of address. Uh, how would you rate the shooter mechanics of Project NOAA? This actually was the greatest focus on this step of the, of the, of the race for Project NOAA, was to really make awesome shooter mechanics. That was the primary focus. And uh, that is rated good to excellent by a lot of you. So I guess the team has really delivered on that. Gameplay is really solid, and the combat is very satisfying. Awesome game. Want it on Steam Early Access now? Are there more people saying that? Yeah! yeah. Okay. Must have unique e-field perfect. Okay. <laughs> and we had another hands-on demo. We had the Project Arena prototype from Atlanta. <laughs> And uh, here are some action shots. And I believe we have been able to make a video um, which we're going to play, exactly. Uh, so we actually got a lot of good feedback on the mixed reality video the team prepared. So I just wanted to kind of show to people on the stream what it looks and feels like. People really get into it. The dodging really plays a part. I was actually getting into it so much yesterday that I broke an Oculus Rift. It's rather embarrassing. <laughs> I was like, I was really dodging down, then I stepped on the Kaler and stood up and ah, broke it. Uh, so it's been really fun. Uh, here are actually the winners of the day one. Uh, we have Sam Billingham, who won. Uh, he looks very athletic, which is good, because I have been talking to uh, Morgan, or Dream Crusher, as his dev, dev name is. Uh, that, oh, okay, so your stamina is your actual stamina. How can I raise the stamina? Uh, you have to go into exercise, Elmar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the winner is going to get a NVIDIA 980 Ti. And uh, number two, Black Junior, is getting a 970. Uh, so good applause to them. Good showing on this first CrossFit Arena. <laughs> and here's the feedback. It is staggeringly positive. Uh, I mean, you've seen the other feedback points. It's barely measurable other than excellent and good. Oh my God, that's wrong. Excellent, make this game. Take my money. As a CEO, I generally like that comment. 
Uh, uh, this is the beginning of something big, also like that. Fantastic fun, absolutely amazing experience. Uh, I guess that's, I would call that glowing feedback. So definitely I know the team has learned a lot from these three days seeing this in the wild. I know the Oculus team has also learned a lot seeing their controllers torture tested in a highly competitive game. So this has been super helpful for everyone involved. So I want to thank you for everything you've helped with all our projects we're showing here. Thank you. And I mean, just like in 2013 when we showed EVR, which became an awesome game, last year when we saw Gunjack, which became an awesome game, I hope that we will be able to take these projects further. And now I want to welcome on stage the executive producer for Eve Online, Andy Norgren. Hey guys, I'm having such a good fan fest. Are you having a good fan fest? <laughs> it's been so much fun talking to a lot of you guys out here, hearing your thoughts and ideas about Eve, both the sober ideas and the less coherent ones, <laughs> if I <laughs> express it like that. There was a fantastic pub crawl last night, and I want to just share with you a few glimpses of what my fan fest has been like so far. Okay, make feet of sound. <laughs> Those are, those are going really So that was round one, and I'll see you tonight for round two. <laughs> and the encounter with the Fido ended well, by the way. <laughs> so all the other doves I'm talking to, they're telling me that they're getting so much good feedback and input on their ideas and on the work, and meeting all of you guys in the panels, hearing the questions you ask, and talking to you guys in the round tables. It's such an important part of the process of developing EVE Online. And every year after FanFest, all of us, we come back to work and we really know why we do this stuff. And we are so full of inspiration. So a big thank you for all of this that you bring to us, all of the energy that you come here with and your passion for the game. And next week, we release the Citadel expansion. It represents a lot of hard work for us. For me personally, it's such an expression of the vision that we have for EVE Online. And I've really enjoyed hearing from a number of you what plans you have for Citadels, and, and actually also for the new capital stuff. I'm really, really curious to see who figures out how to use all the new weaponry and, and uh, fighter stuff and doomsday weapons and so on to gain an advantage on the battlefield. And I wish all of you best of luck with whatever endeavor you have in mind for when the expansion hits. It's such a pleasure and honor to make this game for you. And before I hand you over to CCB Guard to uh, tell us about player meets and a few other things, I think we should uh, exercise the screen and the speakers in this room. I want to see this trailer again. Bring on the wrecking machine! We all have dreams of greatness. At Upwell Consortium, we have made this dream a reality. The Citadel. Your city in the heavens. A testament to the ingenuity and spirit of humankind. Unlock your true potential and build the life we know you deserve. 
Together, we can and will. Hello, FanFest! Yeah. Oh, it's great to be here. Have you had a good time so far? Yeah! yeah. Like, uh, my only regret this weekend is not being allowed in the cosplay contest. <laughs> Since I'm, a, I'm an employee, it wouldn't be fair. Uh, but uh, congratulations to everyone who won instead. <laughs> um, I am here to talk about player gatherings. Uh, obviously, we care very much about player gatherings and uh, all of you who are here with us and everybody who's been at home watching a player gathering uh, on their computer screen for three days. So it's, uh, it's something that's very close to all our hearts. Uh, player gatherings uh, are sprinkled all around the globe. They happen all the time uh, in all kinds of places. You don't hear about a lot of them, but they're out there. Uh, and we have these two big events every year, FanFest and eVegas, and in between, it's very important to have these events uh, that you, the players, put on to connect the community and you know, keep the friendship powered up. Uh, so I look at player gatherings sort of as ship maintenance arrays for the friendship. <laughs> now, last year was a very good year for player gatherings. We've had more interest, uh, more talk about player gatherings, a lot of buzz in the community, and more events happening all over the place. Lots of new ones that are very interesting. Uh, I was able to, I was fortunate enough to be able to travel to a lot of these, and I brought with me uh, my video camera, and uh, let's take a look at what happened. It was a lot of fun, and we'll, uh, we'll see more of that. But uh, in, uh, in the last year, a lot of this growth uh, that has happened and a lot of the interest that has been uh, taking place in the, in the community about player gatherings is due to Eve Meet. Yeah. 
Now, Ariel Rin and Bam Stroker have done a tremendous job with it, uh, and uh, they've really given people a place to see where events are taking place and, si and si like help, help players who are organizing them get people to notice what they're doing. Uh, last year, uh, we talked about Eve Mead, it, it just come out, it's been out for a year and a bit now, uh, and they, this year they were uh, kind enough to share some statistics with us, and uh, there have been 223 registered events since the site started, which is uh, roughly translates to an event somewhere in the world every other day. That's pretty cool, it's pretty cool. And uh, they have had 46,000 unique users sign up, which is great, but there's still a few of you that haven't, so, you know, go out there and sign up. It's, it's still a lot of people that have to, have to check out Eve Meet. Uh, we took a look at which countries had uh, been most, you know, industrious in, in signing up. And starting the top countries uh, from the bottom up is Russia with 3%. Uh, Australia has 6%. Uh, Nine percent from Canada. <laughs> uh, Ten percent come from Germany. Twelve percent from the UK. And I'm, I'm hoping that uh, there's someone in the room uh, from the country that topped the chart at 36 percent. Okay. 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 What? Well, yeah. Glad some of you guys made it. <laughs> but uh, uh, player gatherings are not all fun and games. There's a lot of work involved. And uh, we're fortunate to have with us here at FanFest some of the people who are involved in organizing some of the biggest, most established, um, you know, the, the most, yeah, biggest, greatest events in the world. Uh, and they, if you see these people around, uh, you should uh, give them a hug and buy them a beer in that order because otherwise you spill the beer. Uh, so, a lot of events are small, most events start out small, some of them grow to be bigger when ambition kicks in. Not all of them want to be bigger and they don't have to be, but if somebody you know or you have some ambition to do something uh, bigger with events, uh, you can talk to me and I can give you advice, or you can find any of these people or anyone else who's done uh, events because they are generous with their time and they'll help you and give you advice. There's a great community forming around organizing gatherings. Uh, so, I wanted to put together a timeline of the events that we know as of this moment we are going to be taking part in for the rest of the year. Um, and I'm gonna show that to you, but I wanna make a little disclaimer because CCP Quant, he was kind of hawking up all the graphics resources in CCP with all this fancy stuff. So I had to sit down and make it myself, but I uh, think I did a pretty good job. <laughs> so uh, starting off after FanFest, um, we're gonna be at uh, a pub meet in Glasgow. I'm actually going there myself, I've settled that. Uh, then we're gonna be sending some people to Eve Northeast, which take, takes place in Pennsylvania. You saw some clips from it, uh, a lot of fireworks, uh, barbecue, and they have tickets, uh, all food is included for all three days, so it's a really great event. I highly recommend it for the US people. Uh, Eve Dublin, uh, they've been putting on great pub meets, and now they're stepping it up and making a two-day ticketed event with t-shirts and stuff, and uh, uh, you should definitely check that out if you're anywhere near that. Uh, G Fleet in Germany, they've put on some, they've really impressed us with their organization, uh, super organized, uh, and they put on a really good show with lots of good content, uh, and we will be there. Also, we're going to Eve T in Nottingham. Uh, we've been going to those uh, for, uh, for the last couple of years, they do two events a year, ticketed events, lots of like content like tournaments and uh, good things happening there. Uh, Eve London, which is now, um, uh, it's kind of gone onto the Eve and T umbrella, they started working together. Um, that's the king of pub meets, they get up to 250 people in the pub at the same time, there's no tickets or anything, you just walk in and have a pint and, and talk, to, talk to some capsuleers, it's a great time and you have no excuse if you live close by. Uh, Eve Serdam will be happening in November this year, they say it's the biggest player gathering uh, put on by players uh, every year, and they may be right. Um, some say it's the dankest party of the year. Uh, you'll have to be the judge. Uh, only one way to find out. Eve Down Under uh, is happening somewhere around that time. They haven't put down a date, but even if it's on the other side of the world, we'll be going there too. So, that brings me to this other big event that we have later in the year. Uh, Eve Vegas. Yeah, this is a crazy party. Um, 
And last year, uh, we, were, we had the biggest Eve Vegas to date. We've sold out three years in a row. Uh, we keep adding tickets and space, and you guys keep uh, buying those tickets and occupying the space. So we're going to follow that recipe. We're going to bring more devs. We're going to have more tickets. We're going to bring more games and more fun. It's going to be crazy. <laughs> and uh, when is it? Uh, so you can start planning your next party after this one. I want to give you a little, little hint. <laughs> Some of you guys got this, I think. It's not a very complicated hint. Um, we're going to be in Vegas, uh, Halloween weekend, 28th to the 30th of October, Planet Hollywood Resort and Casino. Again, they've been fantastic. Tickets are available right now. And if you go to our website and hurry up, you can get room codes uh, for very affordable accommodation, and we'll see you in Vegas. Yeah! But uh, don't get too preoccupied yet because we have some work to do here at FanFest because tonight we have the party at the top of the world. The, uh, this is going to be an insane party, uh, as always. Uh, we have the Viking rock gods of Skullmult uh, stepping on stage to entertain you all and to warm up for the most sought-after band in the history of the galaxy, I would say. Uh, this is a band that only plays at uh, very exclusive events. Um, the Perma Band, of course. Uh, we are going to play you all our hit songs. We're going to bring the racking machine down upon your eardrums. Um, and we will also play a lot of songs that we like. And we want you in the room, close to the stage, dancing and singing along. It's going to be crazy. We're going to bring DJs, uh, friends, and special guests. And it's going to be off the hook. So uh, since we had the president with us uh, today who gave an absolutely amazing speech, uh, I want to end this with a quote from another politician, uh, a man who, whose wisdom has inspired millions of people um, throughout his long and uh, prosperous career. And like he once said, see you at the party! <laughs> Thank you, Svenny. <laughs> so, uh, we're now at the end. And a big feature of these three points is the annual part. And of course, now it's time to talk about FanFest 2017. Uh, we have picked the dates. These are the dates for next year. So, if you plan on baby making at the time, <laughs> these are the things to aim for. Um, Next year is actually a very special year uh, for CCP. So next year, CCP will become 20 years old. <laughs> so that is no small feat to pull off in the gaming industry. It's, uh, it's not an easy industry, let me tell you. Uh, and not many companies get to be 20 years old, and next year uh, that will be us. So we will be kicking off the celebrations of that with FanFest next year. And this FanFest has been amazing in many ways, uh, but it's also, we've been here for five years in the Harpa, and I think we've really nailed it down how to do this. So I think it's going to be time to kind of jazz it up a bit for next year. It's the 20 years of CCP and all that, so we're going to be doing something sort of new and inspiring for that FanFest. We're not like ready to talk about it in detail, but accept, expect awesome things. And as I hope you have seen, is that CCP is some of its best position it's been in those 20 years. So we have learned a lot. It's been a long journey. You've been here with us. I hope you see and feel in every one of our employees how much more in control and confident everyone is. The fact we're releasing an awesome Citadel expansion just next week after FanFest is no small feat. So I hope you feel with me how much we've come a long way and how much we now can go after this vision of making EVE go on forever. And I want to thank you for being with us for that. Thank you.
But as Svenny said, now it's time for a party. And as many people have figured out, and it also just says so on the YouTube channel, that the trailer song this year uh, is made by Permaband, the Wrecking Machine song. Uh, and I want to uh, introduce Permaband here properly on stage. So in Permaband, we have our very own CCP Gart. He does guitar and vocals and general chaos. <laughs> Give him an applause. <laughs> and lead vocals is CCP Hunter, who manages all the databases of tranquility, moves them around the world and all of that, makes all supercomputers for Etsy to analyze the economy. He is lead vocals. And we have CCP Arnar V, uh, who does drums in the band and does all the video production. And he also does video production and, most importantly, aquarium maintenance at CCP. <laughs> and we have CCP Noah, who does badass bass and vocals and choreography. <laughs> we have CCP Grimmy, who does rhythm guitar and songwriting. And we have a new addition to the team. It's CCP Stracht. He's in our MAMA team, and he does badass rock goddess guitar. <laughs> CCP Atomic does vocals and is also a part of our kitchen crew. <laughs> and CCP Hot Pants is keyboard, bass, trailer integration, and also does overall executive production, I think. He, he certainly looks like an executive producer of a rock band. <laughs> and, OK, why am I taking this time to introduce them? Well, they're awesome, that's one. And they've been making awesome things for years. And they uh, were so inspired by the feedback on the Wrecking Machine <laughs> video uh, that they have now spent a bit of time over FanFest to put together a music video, a new permaband music video. Uh, and that should get everyone pumped for this party. So I am going to leave the stage with this thing, and then I'll see you all at the party. Thank you. you 